Live from Beit Shemesh and broadcasted around the world, you are listening to the From Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Nahum Kligman. Interviews and advice from Jewish entrepreneurs from around the world. Listen, learn, be Masliach. Welcome to episode 12 of the From Entrepreneur. I am extremely privileged to have a very dear friend with me here today. His name is Judah Michelle. He is the executive director of Camp Hass. You're really not supposed to say good things about uh, people in front of them, right? There's an Indian against that. So I'm going to be very, very small in my words to say that, you know, he is one of the greatest people to ever walk the face of this earth. And that's holding back. <laughs> Uh, those that know him know that he is the sweetest of the sweet. He is an unbelievable person, a gem of a friend, a gem of a guy. And it's a, see, he's laughing, but it's a big schuss, Judah, to have you here with us today. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. It's Des a pleasure. Despite that. <laughs> well, I told you I'm holding back. You know, I'm not even going <laughs> to go into the details, but those that know you know it's MS. So uh, first of all, a little shout out to uh, Donnie Waxman. Uh, he's, he's blushing now. You can't see it, but he... He's blushing. Anyway, a little shout out to Donnie Waxman for suggesting this and putting this together. As soon as he did, I realized it's a no-brainer. Camp Hask is something you know that we've always known about, we've heard about. It's been around for how, – how long has, has the camp been around for? Over 40 years. Over 40. I'm 42. So like since I was you know born, we've heard and, and known of Camp Hask. It's a brand. It's a camp that we've grown up with, that we've heard stories with. And I think there is so much more – I mean when you hear about Camp Hask, the regular – uh, Joe in the street, you hear, okay, it's a camp for special needs kids and they do amazing things. They have an incredible concert. They have a marathon. You know, the, there's, um, you know, one of the largest organizations when it comes to dealing with, uh, from special needs kids. Although I assume it's uh, all Jewish kids. Is it just, a uh... legally we're, we're open to, and we're to accept everyone who we're able to help. Right. Those who are choosing to come to a Shomer Shabbos kosher environment with, you know, Hasidic Shechita and Chol Yisrael <laughs> Milk and, uh, you know, five million a day and uh, right. Kolo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's a, it's a unique service for the uh, Orthodox Torah community. Excellent. So, so I we mean, have, we have from the cross the entire spectrum of Chol Yisrael. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Sure. We're going to get into more detail about that. I just, uh, I, the, the purpose of this podcast, I really want to get, you know, I am excited myself to hear the inside story, to hear what goes on behind the scenes to pull off a summer event. And, you know, just like, you know, we've, we've mentioned before in other podcasts, running a nonprofit organization or a for profit organization is really a lot of the same lessons we can learn as entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, great business lessons. And, uh, you, you know, there's uh, budgeting and marketing and staff and uh, fundraising and everything that goes into uh, running uh, an organization. So let's start off. First of all, I just did one other note. Just I don't know if my listeners know, but I have a special needs son. And so Camp Hask is uh, very dear to my heart. Anything dealing with uh, special needs kids is dear to my heart. So uh, it's uh, an extra privilege for me to be able to do this uh, podcast with you. But first, what is Hask? So Camp Hask stands for the Hebrew Academy for Special Children. Um, about 40 years ago, uh, Rabbi and Mrs. Khan, Aleya Mashalam, Zechon Mavracha, really saw a need in the Jewish community, in the Orthodox community, and began a program for individuals with special needs. First, it was a, uh, a year-round program as a school, developed then into vocational, and then a summer program. Now, 40 years later, HASC really has three main branches that are all, you know, coming from the same place originally, but now run as individual non-for-profit organizations with similar and parallel goals, complementary goals, but really work sometimes in partnership, sometimes independently, but all parallel. There's Hask Inc., which are a network of schools in Brooklyn, Rockin County, Long Island, for individuals with special needs that are you know, all board of education schools. There's something called Hask Center, which are um, dozens of group homes uh, and respite facilities, primarily around Brooklyn. Uh, and then we have Camp Hask during the summer, which is a seven-week summer program for individuals with special needs. There are a lot of the same children are in you know each program, but uh, each one runs independently with its own board of directors and its own budget and its own goals. Very interesting. So, I mean, I assume that was not something that was originally planned, but... Uh... It's the way it developed, you know, with uh, it's over years with the needs of the community developing and uh, different people with different strengths and abilities and uh, dreams. Right. And, uh, and thank God where we've gotten to at this point is that the camp has, you know, just recently 
in the last couple of years as its own board of directors and uh, our own budget. Uh, and we work in partnership with the schools in order to uh, provide an educational program for children during the summer. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I, I definitely want to dig into the summer. I want to dig into camp and, uh, you know, the kids and stuff. But first, people that don't know you, why don't you give us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, where you went to school, and then, like, you know, you moved there to Israel, yeah. how you ended up even working for Camp Haskell even before you were executive director, and then, uh, you know, what led to uh, becoming executive director. Is this like a, is a Snapchat tweet? Blog long form answer or is this long like, form? We go as long as you want. People, I seriously, this is one. I don't know if there's 140 characters or less. <laughs> how are we going to fit it in? No, we could go as long if you know we could we could, we could go for two hours. Five thousand seven hundred seventy five years ago, <laughs> Hashem created the world right. uh, to find a uh, resting place here, a dear Batachtonim. My wife and I and our five kids live here in uh, Ramat Beit Shemesh. Uh, we made Eliyah about 13 years ago. Oh, same year as me, 2002. Uh, yeah, first nefesh ben nefesh flight. What? I was on the first nefesh ben nefesh flight. Yeah. Look at that. Wait, I didn't know that you were there. We were, we were making, I mean, we were, we were in the back making our daughter was screaming. That was flight. you? That was us. That was us. That Nobody, was us. Slept, that was your entire flight psych. I just, I, I, <laughs> I tried to hide in the bathroom most of the flight. You know, That's funny. Uh, the, uh, Rabbi Smiles was on that flight with us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's so funny. I didn't know you were on that flight. Yeah. Well, it was such a, ma- a major historical moment. It was, everyone was in such oros. So it, it was. It was really, we didn't focus on any prat because we we're so connected to the, the massive change in history of like the world, you know. Right. Uh, and the, the mass uh, exodus from exile. So, so that's cool. Okay, so, before, them, you know? so before you got to Eretz Yisrael, where were you born? Where did you grow Grew up? in Muncie. Okay. And uh, high school in Jersey, actually, at, uh, at the first school. I went to Frisch. Yeah. Oh. And, um, had this course to learn and continue learning at uh, Shalvim. Right. Uh, first, right after high school. And then uh, after I finished YU, I uh, have my smicha here in Eretz Yisrael. Went to graduate school for Jewish education and administration. And at the same time, I went to Baruch for a degree in public administration. Oh, that's nice. My brother went to Baruch for a little bit. I mean, the goal was to help. I, I wanted to be Marbit's Torah and the Jewish people, but I wasn't a Talmud Chacham and didn't really see myself as someone who was, wasn't confident enough to say that I would be able to make my life and tafkid and mark in the world that way and wasn't sure exactly how and what and where. I uh, just wanted to be helpful to the Jewish people. But and, uh, and and went into that to, went to that to, to agree to, to study just to see how to affect the community and how to be a part of things in Kali Israel. I mean, just to, you know, I, I think that is a very beautiful aspect of, of yourself. And you know, most people they're coming out of college, their, their goals are how do I make money? How do I make a pranasa? How do I? Your focus was more how do I affect Kali Israel? And yeah, I got to make a pranasa, but really your goals were about how can I affect Kali Israel in the best way. And I had the privilege to, to teach. I was teaching for a couple of years. I went back and taught at Frisch, actually. It was my first job. You taught at Frisch? Wow. That was your youth company. director in a, in a couple of schools before we made Aliyah. And then when we made Aliyah, I went to work in my wife's family has a, a very, very special yeshiva uh, in Reshit Yushalayim. I had this chus to be there for you know just about a decade, learning oh, wow. and teaching and being a part of the programming. So I really got to you know not just be involved with the guys, but uh, to also see a, bin- a business from the inside out and be involved in organizing the, the programming and the two limb, which was a, a really unbelievable opportunity. So you were at Rashid for about 10 years, but yeah. I guess that left you with the summers open for uh, other stuff. Yeah. Right. When did you actually get involved with actually, Hask? I mean, and... I'd always heard about Camp Hask. Right, like um, I always else, wanted I... to marry somebody who worked at, at Hask, <laughs> but I, 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 I didn't. I never worked there. Uh, you know, I was a guy and I wasn't like the, the guys who are working in camp today, these unbelievable tzaddikim, these guys who have just incredible desire to give. I, I, I know I hung out during the summer. I learned. I did trunks and learned the Nesha Torah and, you know. Right, Mister you know, Kolo, you know, but actually, a friend who I uh, who your I wife met, worked in Hask. I met her. Said? She worked in Hask for a few years. Her, my wife worked in Hask. Her her brothers uh, mm-hmm. worked in camp. A couple of her brothers. It was very important to her. Already from our first date, she was talking about how amazing of a place it was, and I just thought, okay, yeah, it's great. It's another great place that people go and do chesed, and it's it's not for me, but it's really nice. And, right. You know, uh, we all have special needs. That was my you know <laughs> the way I thought about it, but I don't really know anything about it until um until actually a friend, Naftali Herman who uh, now works with the OU, with Yachad, uh, really a wonderful person who I met uh, as a youth director in Muncie. And then again, we crossed paths in Reshit. He was a madrich. There was a turnover. There was a change in the organization at Camp Hask. There was a, a management change and a, a little bit of a tumult. And, this was um, seven, eight years ago? It was about 10 years ago now, 10 years 11, 11 years ago. Okay. And um, 
they were restructuring and reorganizing and, and looking for some new staff. And there was a position open to be the camp rabbi. And that was, uh, that was what I was recommended for. And I ended up meeting the, the management there. And uh, my wife's dream came true. And we were able to go back thrilled. to Camp Ask. Yeah, we were able to go back to Camp Ask uh, as the rabbi. And I was learning with campers and giving shurim at night and organizing what, the, the base medrash. And stuff? Yeah, we had a bit, there's a base medrash program. And I was giving shurim there and um, checking the Erev, which is the easiest Erev in the entire world <laughs> because it's just a fully you know, fenced in campus. Right. And it was, it was a great entryway into a, a magical world that I didn't really know about that I had never been exposed to. And I, like I said, I drank, I drank the juice. It was, uh, drank the juice. it was really, it was really something unbelievable. I got to tell you just you know, a similar experience with myself, if I may, you know, growing up also, I had, you know, I, I had friends that worked in Camp Hask and I, I was always took the attitude of that's very nice, but I, that's not for me, you know, call Kavod, you, you know, and you hear these stories about these guys and yeah, they had the best summer. I'm like, I don't know, taking care of a bunch of special needs kids for the summer is not really up my alley. And when I was living in Passaic, we actually, in our, our building, we had, there was a, a man who had a cerebral palsy, not a Jewish guy, but my wife was always very nice to him and would always talk to him. And whenever I saw him, you know, I would, you know, I would say hi and I would be like nice to him, but I, I didn't want to do more than just your hello. You know, I always felt a bit uncomfortable and it wasn't until I had my own special needs son that I realized how beautiful these neshamas are, how beautiful these people are, and how much they have to give to us. You know, people think, I, I once did a, uh, a magnet that said people, you know, giving to special needs kids, they, that special needs kids give more than they receive. And I know uh, in, in my family, we, we definitely see that. We've definitely gained a lot more from our son than uh, we've given him. But I guess now you're, you're coming in and you're seeing firsthand, you know, what is special about dealing the, with these neshamas? There's something exceptional about being in a place where everyone, campers, uh, staff, everyone are looking at each other and seeing one another for what we are able to do as opposed to what we're not able to do. And we're not defined or limited by disabilities where there's a person first way of seeing one another and seeing the world. It's not autistic people, but it's, it's an individual with autism, not someone who is a Downs kid, but it's an individual with Down syndrome. In other words, putting the person first, the 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 godly part of the individual person. That this is a, a human being with an identity who has likes and dislikes and a personality and kochos and, and a purpose in the world and inherent value in the world. A uh, shtik elokus, an element of, of God in the world, a manifestation of God in the world, a soul that, that has a body. I and mean, some bodies are able to function and work and be more independent than others. And to be in an environment where that's at the core and where the goal here is to level the playing field. So that everyone can be a part of everything to the best of their ability, right. where it's not like we're walking around our neighborhood or any neighborhood in the world where you try to create opportunities for accessibility or for integration for individuals with special needs. But here is a little bit of like a, a wrinkle in time and space that for seven weeks in a, you know, a, a bunch of acres up in Parksville in upstate New York, there is this little biodome of an alternative reality where everyone is able to, everyone belongs and everyone is appreciated and valued and loved for who they are and not for what they can't do or can do. And it's not about IQ and it's not about uh, disabilities. It's about abilities and everyone being part of the same body, limbs in the same body. And we all are working for one another. And there's something magical that takes place when Jewish people, when people are most nefesh for each other. Rav Dessler yeah. writes that at um, the Isha Shunamit, is, it, is this okay? Is this, too, is this not entrepreneurial? No, today? this is beautiful. This is perfect. When the Isha Shunamit opened the door for Elio Anavi, that opening the door just opening the door for another yid. One person opening a door for another enabled Elio and Navi later to perform Tchiyas HaMesim on a child. In other words, the ability to change nature in the world, miracles take place when we do for one another. When we go outside of our comfort zone, a little bit, HaKadosh Baruch Hu responds, like, you know, on the level of, of a machat and ulam, this, this disproportional divine response in what we're able to affect. And that's how you see children with special needs coming to Camp Haskin in the summer and far exceeding their individualized goals that are set by professional therapists and the state of New York and their doctors. They just far exceed that the expectations of what they're able to do in, in terms of physical growth and in terms of reaching goals in life skills and in the classroom and in the therapy room. It's, it's, it's an unbelievable thing, and it's all because of, of the incredible love and dedication and doing for one another that uh, it's enabled in the environment of Camp Ask. You know, I think when we were talking about this, which is absolutely beautiful and what an incredible environment to be in, but it's almost uh, – not almost. It is like you are living for seven weeks – in the most unjudgmental place you possibly could, where nobody is judging each other and everybody is out to help the next person. Everybody is out to, to do for others. 
And right, I mean, that's really, it's like you're sort of, you are living in a different world. You're living in the world of how Hashem wanted the world to be or wants the world to be. The achdus, I mean, I assume that not, not, not all Hasidic staff, it's not all, uh, you know, I'm sure you have Dati Lumi, I'm sure you have Haredi. That, 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 that's what's amazing. That's what's, that, that's what's really unique is that we have the full tapestry of the Jewish people. There really, we have campers. We have we have campers from Yiddish speaking Hasidic homes in Williamsburg and Kirsiol. We have campers from homes in other neighborhoods in Westchester and New Jersey, now, where they're not from Shomer Shabbos homes. Mm-hmm. Um, the counselors primarily are coming. If you're going to make a demographic here, primarily from the World of Yeshiva University and the YU Joint Israel program here. In Israel, you know, we're drawing from those yeshiva and seminaries primarily, but there's a professional staff which originates in Brooklyn. Our office is in Borough Park. It was founded by a family that's in Borough Park. Right. And there's an amazing cross-section that I don't know that there's anywhere else in the world that can say that. I mean, just the, the individuals who come visit us throughout the summer to be machazic staff and for them to, to draw inspiration, whether it's, you know, one day we could have the Lakewood Mashkiach or Matas Yael Solomon. Shlita, I remember when he, I remember reading about Shalema when he came. comes and the next day President Richard Joel will be in camp. Um, wow. We'll have, you know, members of the, of the Jewish Federation coming to visit camp, you know, to see and to, to be seen. And then you'll have the Bob of a Rebbitzin coming to visit. I mean, Hasidic Rebbe's uh, and uh, and Sadiqim of all types and walk of life. And that's something which is calculated. Uh, it's something which is, we're conscious about. And uh, it's something which is very unique. The environment in camp, like you were mentioned before, it's a place where people feel good about themselves. It's staff members come and unleash this incredible positivity, this incredible potential. Part of what our goal is, and I, I think that it was always happening, but now we're, we're talking about it more consciously and we're trying to cultivate it, is to create an incubator for leadership, for creativity, for growth, for inspiration. Because let's face it, we have over 500 staff every summer. 500? Wow. There are How many kids are there? Indiv- over 350 individuals with special needs. With the entire range, autism and Down syndrome and, and all sorts of intellectual and disabilities and physical disabilities. Right. With a staff of over 500, we're a city. Wow. And let's face it, the majority of staff who come are coming for a summer or two are not going to be spending their life professionally working in the world of intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities. They're not. They're going to be lawyers and doctors and businessmen and business people and, and teachers and entrepreneurs. And they're going to be living in the Jewish community. Our goal is to cultivate that, is to harness that incredible Monsieur Snefesh, that, like you said, it's, it's seven weeks. What's seven weeks over the course of a lifetime? Our goal is to cultivate that and to awaken the abilities and the recognition that, wow, I could do something extraordinary here. And to, for them later to be able to apply that to whatever they're getting into in their family, in their community, in their, God willing, their children's schools and supporting Torah, uh, in growing the Jewish community and in fixing the world. That's the goal. And you'll see that there's a disproportionate number uh, or percentage or concentration of Camp Hask alumni who are involved every walk of Jewish life. They're the doers. Um, it's amazing. I was going to you know, comment on that, that the, the people that I know that were counselors or worked at Camp Hask, they're some of the most special people even today. Right? I think you know, when it comes to Shaduchim back when, you know, when I was in Parsha, I guess, you know, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was, you know, if someone – and I guess it's very true still to today – if someone puts on their quote unquote resume, hey, I worked in Camp Hask, oh, you worked in Camp Hask, you know, you already realize that person is a giver. That person is part of something special. And that's it's actually a big mile to look at uh, in somebody when you're looking for a marriage partner. Yeah. Well, one of our one of our board members, uh, Judge Danny Butler, uh, was a very inspiring person. Uh, he's also the father of a camper. Shout out to Uri Butler. He's our uh, the chairman of uh, of Smiles in the summer. He's also the head of uh, the Hatsala in camp. Mm-hmm. He's also a good friend. Anyways, uh, Judge Butler always points out how everywhere you go, you know, more times than not, when you see somebody who's stepping into a role of responsibility and taking a chryas, chances are that uh, they might have cut their teeth or, or sewed the roads and learned a few steps as a, as a counselor and Hask. Hmm. It's a self-selected group. And that, that's, you mentioned Shidduchim. You know, people joke about it, you know, halachically approved Shidduch Kip, but it's a real <laughs> thing. There's a self-selected group of people who are there and they get to meet in a very natural kind of environment. It's not for everyone, and it's a, a, not for everyone to work in a co-ed environment, and we're very aware of that. But people kind of meet each other in that way and have a lot in common. So have there been – I mean, I assume – I mean, I know there hundreds, are have people – hundreds, hundreds of shidduchim are made hundreds, from people hundreds, working hundreds, Kemask. Hundreds. Wow. And, uh, and it's a real thing because, again, there's a shared experience. And a lot of the questions are answered. You kind of know the type of person. Maybe you've seen them in action you know, from afar or up close. 
and uh, you're able to know that this is a person who's committed to going outside of their comfort zone. Uh, you know, in terms of developing a mindset for creativity and, and entrepreneurship and taking risks and, and being able to go out of one's comfort zone for an idea, for a concept, you know, there's no question that the experience that, that, that kids, 18, 19 year olds have before they're starting college or while they're after their first year in college, before they enter into the professional world, having this experience going out of a fixed mindset uh, you know, and going into a, a growth-oriented mindset, a risk-taking mindset, is something which, which I'm, I'm certain is affecting the way they see themselves in the world and they see their their future opportunities. Amazing. So you have 500 staff members. I mean, that's that's an insane amount of people. You know, just uh, in 350 kids, and and as you said, each kid is an is an individual. What are some of the challenges that you have when dealing with kids with special needs? Like, do you have kids that are, you know, low lane who need feeding tubes? Do you have kids that are more bedridden or less active? Like, yeah. how, so, so how? Let's take, let's break this down into two questions. Go ahead. First of all, we have an unbelievable team of people. We have assembled a galaxy alliance of just absolutely the best people who are passionate and committed or in love with what they're doing and um, who keep the main thing the main thing. That's really um, the credo here. Shmil Khan has been in camp for over 40 years. His parents started it. He knows every inch and every nail and every screw and every single millimeter of the campus. Wow. He's somebody who is you know, a humble person who's not interested in any credit and is not interested in, in any of the limelight. And behind the scenes and with the families, it really is just the one who, who's been committed day and night for decades. Just a couple of years ago when there was this turnover in camp and the new board of directors came into place and made this move from being the camp rabbi to being in a more programmatic role and then in a more administrative role and now trying to grow the organization and, and grow the services. I mean, it's so clear and it doesn't even, I mean, it's almost silly to say it, but without having such dedicated and bright, and capable professionals in the roles that they are, I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost, you know, I'm almost like an afterthought here at this point. I, mean, I, I stand back and watch Dr. Rezal Yaish, who's our girls head counselor, and Rabbi Avi Pollock, who I work with, we work together. He lives here in Beit Shemesh. We work together on a weekly basis. We're in touch, you know, every day on the program and on the administrative side as a boys' head counselor. You know, when I when I'm watching the, the incredible therapists and teachers in every single facet of the program, seeing the dedication and the abilities, just just the incredible drive that the professionals have, it's humbling to me. I mean, I don't have a background in in working with individuals with special needs. It's an incredible thing to watch. Uh, an incredible thing to be a part of. So having a good team and trusting that team and empowering that team to swim and sink and to excel on their own, that's been something which which I really have learned on the job here. And I'm surrounded by incredible and extraordinary people who are Moser Nefesh day and night uh, in an absolutely amazing way. And is, I mean, it must that, be literally day and night. Uh, literally, literally. And it's, and it's all year. I mean, we're already planning summer 2016 before summer 2015 happened. It's funny. I, when we interviewed uh, Tully Klein from uh, Camp Rondo, he said the similar thing that they start the next summer, preparing for the next summer during the current summer. Yeah. I mean, are we already are we already keeping a Google Doc going, a running Google Doc going for things that we have to do different in November to get ready for the next summer that we might have uh, been better off doing this past summer. In other words, like we're in a constant state of looking to improve what we're doing and to share feedback. You know, and it's an environment of of openness. There are Dibur Michelle Emes among those of us who are working together in the uh, what we call the upper staff right. uh, in our cabinet. We're very open. There's a the level playing field that's between campers and counselors, between staff members and uh, and constituents. We also find among uh, upper staff and administration. There's the ego really has to be checked at the gate when we're when, when we're working together. In that way, you know, it's it's kind of like the Avodas Hamishkan. Where there's so many different kalim and so many facets and so many different jobs. And like the Rambam says, if a levy is doing the job of a coin or the coin is doing the job of a levy or one who's supposed to be singing is schlepping and, or the one who's standing by the door is trying to play a flute. So it's, it, it, the Rambam says chayv misa because we're dead in the water, you know, if we're not respecting each other's jobs and each other's roles and recognizing our own, uh, you know, what, what our part in the puzzle is. Uh, and, and when I say that there's over 500 staff, that includes individuals who are working in the office as full-time administrators. That includes, you know, people who are accountants, uh, doctors, nurses, therapists, teachers, individuals who are working in maintenance, mowing the lawn, unclogging the toilets, and uh, ordering the band-aids. Everybody is on the same level. We're all working together. Amazing. Amazing. And now, a word from our sponsor. Do you have a website that runs on WordPress? If you're like me, you want the peace of mind knowing your website is up to date, 
Secure from viruses and hacks, I will always be up and running at peak performance, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. I was also tired of paying developer hundreds of dollars every time I just wanted a few tweaks to my website or to add a new product to my e-commerce site, but I couldn't even justify paying for even a half-time developer. That is why I became part of the founding team of WP Milk. WP Milk monitors and secures the website and backs it up daily in the cloud using Amazon S3. If your site goes down, we know about it instantly and work directly with your hosting company without you getting involved. Need to add a page to your website? Keep your plugins updated? How about creating a custom form? With WP Milk, you have unlimited email support and site tweaks to always keep your site running smooth and feature rich. For less than $5 a day, you can have your very own professional WordPress team at your fingertips, giving you all these features and much more. At that price, how can you afford not to? You have zero risk with our 30 day no questions asked money back guarantee. So visit WPMilk.com right now and sign up for updates and you will get a special discount on launch. And now back to our show. And so like, you know, something that you touched on before, I just want to emphasize a bit. It's not like I, I used to think until we just started this conversation that, you know, you have a special needs kid. You send them to Camp Hask and Camp Hask maintains the kids levels. But I, you mentioned before that it's not about maintaining, but it's actually helping the kids grow and improve for the coming, you know, for and work on things for the coming year. It's not just about, hey, we're taking care of these special needs kids because the parents, you know, need a break, so to speak. But we're we're not just taking them in and taking care of them. And we're not advanced babysitters, but we're working with them in depth to help them grow and help them change and help make their lives better for longer periods of time. Well, well surpassed, uh, well past the time camp ends. There's an element of respite. That's for certain. There was a, the, that, that families, and, and I don't need to tell this to you, but families who are able to know that their child is being taken care of being loved and being nurtured and not just maintaining, but is growing over a seven week period, you know, and they're able to spend time together and maybe focus on other children or other things that in and of itself is a worthwhile goal. I mean, if nothing else, that in and of itself would be something which would be shove that we are a state approved educational facility. It's a school. We're a school. We have, we have 20 board of education teachers that wow. are working with paras and teachers assistants. We have dozens of therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, feeding therapists, feeding therapists, Figgy Waxman. shout out to the Waxmans. Yeah. But Zahava Whitkin Cohen has been running our therapy department, which is really a world-class facility. Uh, I mean, it's a Jewish organization and we're, we're doing our best to grow and develop and we, we need more and we need better equipment, but it's a world-class program in terms of the individuals, the professionals there. We have an incredible team of people. There's a, we have a Shai Dubin, who's an occupational therapist, who just lives and breathes Camp Hask all year round. So that when the campers arrive and they have their individualized educational programs and goals that are set by the professionals in the state, the carryover that takes place between the professional therapists in the therapy department and in the pool and in the bunkhouses uh, and in the dining room uh, and throughout campus and in shul um, is as absolutely amazing. And campers take their first steps. Every year there's somebody who, Kanainahara, Blainhar, and Hashem should be Mazakos, they're taking their first steps or Psh. saying their first word or, wow. or eye contact or some incredible benchmark, some incredible milestone that far is exceeding anybody's expectations. So you would say you have all, like sometimes you think special needs kids, you think kids that are, maybe they, they have downs or some slate cerebral palsy, but they're mostly, uh, but they're, they're running around. They're seem to be okay. Well, or everyone, everyone's different. There are individuals who are, you know, in wheelchairs and like, you know, are not able to move. And there are, there are individuals who are you know more independent. Camp Ask is unique in that the goal is not, is not integration. The goal is just to create an environment where it is for them. And we are trying to adjust ourselves to the needs of the campers. Um, I'll just give you an example. We have, uh, the pool. The pool is a therapeutic pool. It's heated to a higher degree so that uh, for increased mobility and for therapy therapists to get into the pool and teach the counselors and the lifeguards what to do in the pool so that they're able to massage the joints and, and kind of uh, facilitate movement that otherwise wouldn't be possible. The pool is on an inclined plane, right. uh, like the beach or the mizbeach. Um, <laughs> there's no steps or the steps are on the side so that even campers who are not mobile are able to be put into these specially adaptive wheelchair flotation devices and brought into the pool to enjoy oh, wow. it also. Everyone can swim. Like a waterproof yeah. type of yeah. Uh, chair. Yeah, exactly. Everyone can swim. And there's the, the ratio is more than one to one so that they're able to be in the water and enjoy it. And again, the mobility, um, and that that's where the growth and that's where the change takes place. Basketball. How could somebody who is not able to see or somebody who is not able to move their arms or someone who's in a wheelchair able to play basketball? Or someone with intellectual disability doesn't 
the whole idea of a, right. we have a, on our basketball court, each hoop is at a different height. Huh. You know, we have regulation courts inside in the gym so that the, the counselors can, uh, can ball at night. Right. That's for sure. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, campers who are very athletic and, and love playing full basketball. We have uh, intramurals every year. The campers from Agoda come uh, and other camps. Yachad comes and we play ball. Um, but our, our hoops are all different levels so that even if it means a counselor or a staff member bringing a camper to the hoop in their wheelchair, having them feel the ball and understand and feel the sensation or bounce it so that, that, that the vibration or the sound or smell it or touch it and then be able to put it through the hoop, the hurrah that takes place after is a celebration. You'd think that it was LeBron hitting a, a buzzer beater. <laughs> you know, it's an amazing thing. The, the counselors, the staff members become the eyes for those who aren't able to see and the arms for those who aren't able to move. It's an absolutely extraordinary uh partnership that takes so place. beautiful. Yeah. And the kids that come, they come for full seven weeks? Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing thing. And where do the kids come from? I mean, I know obviously it's in New York, New Jersey, but you have kids that come from We have from all over state, the world. We, of... have, we have children from Eretz Israel who come every summer. Wow. We have uh, campers from Europe. Not many, um, but we have campers from Europe. We have from all over the United States, again, from all different backgrounds. Uh, from all different types of families, children of Chabad Shluchim, children of uh, of well-known Torah personalities from from Lakewood uh, to the Hasidic Shavelt. Really, like you know, this is a Klal Yisrael issue. This is really a universal human issue. So let, let's talk a little bit about the the costs involved, because you know, running a staff of 500, 350 kids. You know, I know just from being a parent of a special needs kid, the cost there are a lot of added costs and and take care of the special needs. Is it you know how much is does it cost to come to camp if you, want, you, know, you want to send your, your well, kids? It's like this. Our budget is over is over $4 million every year. Wow. Just, Just for the seven-week summer? Seven summer. Yeah. Yeah, $4 summer. million. Dollars. Um, listen, we run programs throughout the year for campers and for staff. We've expanded our services throughout the year. But just for our seven-week program to get uh, everything up and running, the facilities, the buildings, the staff, the specialists. We have uh, our medical director is uh, Alyssa Sachs. And Esti Horowitz is working with her this summer. We have incredible doctors and full-time nurses. We have full-time therapists, full-time teachers, dozens. That costs that, that, that's a, our payroll for staff is well over a million dollars a year. Wow. And people are not making you know nearly as much as they would make in other camps or in other summer in programs practice, that are for private. Yeah, for private. There's no one here who is, who is coming for any reason other than the satisfaction of doing something holy and helping and fixing the world. Um, just maintaining a campus. Uh, is something which is expensive, let alone a campus which is outfitted for individuals with special needs with, with adaptive equipment that constantly needs sure. to be updated. We are partially funded by different government bodies. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of great friends uh, in New York State who are working with us. Uh, you know, The governor of New York State uh, knows what we're doing and is supportive of it. Um, State Assemblyman Simcha Felder is somebody who is very familiar with, with what we're doing. Um, Dov Heikind is somebody who's very familiar and very involved with what we're doing. We have local Congress people and, and state assemblymen uh, in New York who are, who are all working, but it doesn't cover nearly as much as what it takes to run our program. And we have to raise quite a bit of money uh, during the off-season to be able to enable everyone who would like to come to camp, who are able to service, to be able to come. And we give well, what out, if, if a kid wants to come but they can't afford it, what does... Campers are not turned away. Families are not turned away because of funds. We work very hard to raise money in order to enable everyone. And our scholarship committee works very hard to enable any family who would like to send their child uh, to be able to send their child to camp. Um, but the actual costs are exorbitant. It's staggering how much it, the actual cost, what it costs us to provide for a camper is, uh, is astronomical. Right. Their families receive funding from different government bodies, whether a child is able to get for the education costs or for therapy costs. So really, the, there's different costs for almost any, any individual who's coming. Someone who's coming from overseas, obviously, is not getting any of those hatavot. Right, from the local those benefits, yeah. Right. Wow, what an incredible program. What an incredible camp. But let, let's talk a little bit. I mean, talking about fundraising, talking about some of the things that you guys do in order to, to raise these funds. Uh, let's talk a bit about, uh, you know, you have special events. You have the Hass concert. You have a uh, marathon you know, how do those things fit in? How, what's the, you know, everybody, you know, just like you've heard of the camp, everybody's heard of the concert. Yeah. You know, how, the concert how is certainly it? our most famous um, fundraiser and, and that which, which there, how I many mean, years I'm, has that been going on for the past um, concert? It's been going on for close to 30 years now. Wow. Yeah, 30 it's been, years. It's been, it's an amazing idea. It was unique in its time and continues to be like the, you know, the primary event in uh, the world of Jewish music with uh, the biggest stars filling Lincoln Center, Avery Fisher Hall. I was there the last couple of years. It is an extraordinary event. Our chairman, uh, Jeremy Strauss, who is uh, a good friend and an incredibly committed and dedicated lay leader, just a real role model for what it means to be a firm entrepreneur, somebody whose day and night is spent uh, working for camp, 
being involved uh, with the families and, and, and the concert uh, specifically this past couple of years, um, the amount of organizations and things he's involved in, it's, it's hard to believe that he actually has a whole business that he runs, uh, numerous <laughs> uh, you know, healthcare facilities and nursing homes. Well, um, you would think and, that Haskell's uh, like his full-time uh, You would think that it's his full-time job. Um, anyways, he's you know, put tremendous cojos into, uh, and resources into you know, kind of re reinvigorating the concert. And God willing, in the coming weeks, you're going to hear exciting news about uh, how that brand is going to be something which is going to go global. I'll just give that as a little teaser. Hmm. Uh, music is something which is very much a part of our day-to-day -day at camp. And the fact that our main fundraiser is something which is uh, musical is, is very beautiful. Uh, Who's some of the stars we, we that, that uh, we counted? Uh, you know, we, we've everybody. I mean, or Chaim David, Avram Free. Yeah, yeah, you name. It. I mean, well, those guys are. Chaim David has played Chaim the concert. David, oh, yeah, oh, Katz has been on that stage. Shlomo. Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, we're we're hoping to to make it bigger and better, and uh, and continue to impress the world, uh, entertain the world, and to bring more light to the world through the concert. But we've really extended our brand to not just. Be limited to one event during the year on a beautiful well, night. How much? In how much of the budget does, does it concert? Is it concert more for branding purposes? No, no, it's a fundraiser. It's a fundraiser. It's a fundraiser. Oh, it's a, brother, yeah, it's a fundraiser. Does, we count on that. You count on that. You we count to, on that. Yeah, uh, we count on that. Actually, last year we had a, a great surprise at the concert. Oh yeah, tell us about that yeah. story. I remember hearing that. Um, there was with, with diaspora was yeah, on stage. Yeah, diaspora was on stage and uh, and a. Uh, a friend and constituent of, um, of some of our, some individuals who are involved in Camp Ask, uh, Mr. Abe Eisner and, uh, and Shmuel Khan, uh, Rabbi Stern, a, a dear friend of theirs, uh, Rabbi Strasser, was really inspired by the concert and uh, wanted a diaspora band to play another song. Their time was up on stage. And right. he, he, made, he made an offer that, uh, that day and we and everyone and the concert producers couldn't refuse. And uh, Amir Tashem, this summer we're dedicating uh, Binyan Strasser, a new building, a beautiful new state-of-the-art facility for uh, campers. Uh, wow. on campus here. Uh, we hope that the Mashkiach will be well. He comes every summer. We hope that uh, Solomon, who's a, a very close with uh, the Strasser, will be able to come to the dedication. And we're going to have a big celebration. But we count on that concert uh, and the sponsors to really help us open up the camp, uh, let alone to extend, uh, you know, to develop our, our services and uh, improve our services. Uh, wow. We have lots of opportunities during the year for people to be involved. This is maybe the opportunity to mention that in the, the last couple of years since uh, I've stepped into this role, um, just noticed how many people love being a part of camp and would desperately want to be involved in camp during the year. Right. Um, so we've been, in, we've been having more staff reunions and more staff opportunities to get together. Uh, we had a great night with Eitan Katz last year, uh, who you might know. I'm a big fan of Eitan, <laughs> big fan of Eitan Katz. Um, he comes every summer. We had a great night with him just for staff to get together. A couple hundred people got together just to you know, remind each other of the greatness that we achieved together and how committed we are to the goals of it. And from that, we developed the Young Leadership Committee um, a young leadership board that has in turn uh, spun off some incredible uh, programs, a young leadership bowling night um, that we had in Chelsea Piers that was a fundraiser, a bake sale before Purim that we had last year was fantastic. Uh, we had a three-on-three -three tournament that our special events coordinator this past year, David Prince, put together in Jersey. I know David Prince, yeah. Uh, fantastic people. We have just the best and the brightest. We have a – there's a, a young man in Yushalayim, Yonatan Sklar, who started, you know – tinkering with computers and printers, being a tech guy uh, at camp years ago, and uh, has grown into really helping us develop our, uh, our fundraising and um, streamlining our technology uh, and grow our brand. Uh, we, have, we have some incredibly talented media people. Avi Stoller is an amazing um, whiz. Uh, he was our director of creative development during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, we have a creative director during the summer. That, it's a summer camp. <laughs> uh, somebody to, to look at the space in camp and look at the environment and think, what could we be doing differently? What could we be doing better, more effectively? Not just, in, not just in terms of the specifically the product that we're giving here, not the service for individuals with special needs, how to well, better install a feeding tube. Aesthetically, to create an environment where people are inspired, where people are more effective. We hired a director of staff development by Dr. Benji Epstein from Yushalayim, just an incredible personality who's a therapist in private practice to work with our staff alongside our camp psychologist, Shalamas Pollock, uh, who's an amazing woman who's, who's been in camp for about 20 years. Benji has brought you know a little bit of a new ruach and a focus helping what Shalamas was trying to do all the years for staff and for campers is now Benji's primary job is to work with staff to help them with stress reduction, to help them work together effectively, to help them develop 
um, a healthier sense of self so that they can do their job more effectively to provide a better respite for the parents and a better service for the individuals with special needs and for the teachers and therapists to do their jobs better, but to help create this brand of positivity and this, this core value system so that it can be replicated and continued throughout the year. It's really a lifetime skill set that we're looking to develop here. Amazing. And so who is, are, are you in charge of uh, fundraising during the year? Is that one of your, so like we, someone wants to get involved. They want to have an idea. They want to help Hask. They, you know, you have a marathon. Is that? Uh, we, we have, we were involved in a number of different races. We had a, our first time ever running our own program this, this year in Prospect Park last month. We did a, a great day, uh, the Hask run. We had a few hundred friends and supporters of uh, camp came out uh, to be a part of this race in Brooklyn was, was awesome. Uh, raised quite a bit of money towards scholarships. Beautiful. We participate in the Jerusalem Marathon uh, every year, which is amazing, uh, a beautiful day. Also, well over 100 uh, friends and supporters of camp came out to be a part of that. We've been a part of uh, those races. A lot of organizations go to these different uh, locations in Florida and California and, and, and islands and elsewhere. We tried to do something a little different this year. A lot of overhead is spent on that and a lot of energy is spent on, on the uh, – I guess the, the buzz of those events. We were looking to do something more local to try to draw and enable individuals and families of campers who aren't able to travel to Acapulco and Puerto Rico and uh, right. LA to be part of these amazing races. And we, we had some were just awesome experiences. We wanted to you know, try something different. We we're open to new ideas. Um, those marathons have been great ways to, to motivate a, a donor base, uh, to reach a new donor base and to kind of get people involved. But we, we are looking. We're looking for development professionals. We're looking for the right person or people to come into our office to be development professionals. We're, we're, we're certainly looking to hire um, more fundraisers and, uh, and people to help us. Uh, we're looking for the right, you know, we're looking for some real world-class talent to bring in to help us go from, we've gone from good to great. Now we're looking to go from great to even, even greater. Better. Yeah. Now that's, that's leading me to my next question is you have this seven-week summer program, but what is, if it's not because of uh, funds, what would be the next great project that Camp Hask would get involved uh, involved with? Or what do you think is still missing that you guys could do if you didn't have to worry about the funds? That's a great question. Uh, we're already doing it, even though we don't have the money for it. No, that, that's the answer. It's like all we're, good entrepreneurs no, no, and all good uh, nonprofits. We, we're going for it. We have an amazingly supportive board that believes in it. Um, and we're, we're going for it. We had this uh, hashtag this past uh, year or so on uh, social media called Hask365. We're just trying to build around the natural relationship that develops between the staff and uh, the campers. Families are blown away by the relationships that develop. Now, if there's a way to monetize that relationship, not for the sake of fundraising, but for the sake of being able to put it back into the kitty to create more opportunities right. to help families and to enable kids with special needs to have the opportunity to be with, uh, be in this type of environment. So we're planning respite, Shabbatons, weekend retreats. Campers are already spending, you know, an incredible amount of time with their counselors during the year. Uh, we'd like how, to, how we'd does like that, to you, you that. facilitate that or that's done on their own? So we, we, we work on facility. We had volunteers who've been working to do that. And, and that sometimes is through our office. We've had great people over the years, like Alex Grossman, who spearheaded Camp Pass Cares, uh, matching up families who are in need, whether they are in the hospital or they're going to, they're having a child or they're, they're in some form of distress. As a reaction to that, we have this program where we provide extra hands and extra support, extra respite. Amazing. Um, we'd love to expand that. We'd love to deepen that and do more of that. We'd love to have more respite uh, weekends. We have an incredible Simchaton uh, over Simchas Torah. We have campers come back up to camp for a little bit of a uh, encore. We bring staff up there and have a blowout Simchas Torah. Amazing. Uh, everyone together. It's really incredible. We'd like to do more of that. We'd love to do more of that. I tell you what, you know, again, as speaking as a father of a special needs kid, having, you know, the one thing we talked a little bit about this before we started the podcast, but having, um, the one thing that we as parents of special needs kids want is we always want to know that our child is happy. We always want to make sure he's taken care of. And, you know, but there are challenges, you know, daily challenges that, you know, comes with raising a special needs child. And again, as I said before, and I want to emphasize, I would never change it for anything in the world, right? But just like you want for every one of your children, you want your special needs child to be happy and comfortable. At the same time, uh, they do uh, sometimes take up more of your time. Like when I, you know, my son, you know, he'll be 13 in, in September and I'll, but, uh, you know, whereas my kids will go to the kitchen and eat, I, you know, sit and I feed him, you know, which can take 45 minutes every night, you know, and, uh, you know, he's still in diapers, which, uh, you know, may probably never change. So knowing that our child is in the hands of, and I'm sure I'm speaking for parents, special needs kids around the world and parents of, of Haas campers, the incredible, incredible 
chesed that you guys are doing, knowing that our children is in incredible hands, being well taken care of, that they're, again, it's not just babysitting, but their individual therapies that they need, their physical therapies, their speech therapies, you know, the type, the, their foods that they need to eat and that they like and the growth and the swimming and everything, just knowing, it gives the parents a, a special koyach that gives them, the, you know, the koyach to go, uh, you know, throughout the rest of the year. And to that, I mean, I, I never sent my, my kid to ask and I don't even know, maybe we'll talk about it afterwards, uh, <laughs> you know, see how feasible that is. But it's, you know, just, Knowing that to, take, to do that for seven weeks is just incredible. And, and so knowing, that, and knowing and, that your child is a child and that he's a person first. Yeah. He's a child with special needs. He's a child who has likes and dislikes. Right. Uh, they might be subtle. They might, might be harder to tell sometimes, but there's likes and dislikes and there's things that make him happy and things that don't that make him less happy. In Camp Pask, our goal is not just to create a seven week pseudo, you know, reality, alternative reality to the universe where a child is treated as a child, an individual is treated as an individual who has special needs, just like there are people who have blue eyes and there are people who have brown eyes, and there are people who have high IQs and there are people who are good at sports and there are people who are more interested in the arts. But to treat every individual as an individual, as a chelik el kamimal, created in the image of God uh, and deserving of respect and love just because, be'etzim, who they are, that's something that we need to replicate in the entire world. To know that a child is not a chefza shel mitzvah, and that, mm. that a person who comes to for the summer is not like, you know, this is just your summer of chesed, but to develop a sense of, of respect for Hashem's creation and the way Hashem is creating the world and sustaining the world, and that we are partners in enabling you know, God awareness in, in every interaction, that God is not just found in the world, and Hashem is not just found in people, but that the Ribbon Shal Olam, godliness is found between people. And those relationships are something that we're looking to you know, create as a binyan av, develop a binyan av that can be replicated uh, throughout the world. And we're looking for people to be partners in that. I mean, part of what we're doing is opening ourselves up to the community and uh, and partnering with different organizations and partnering with different individuals and bringing in outside organizations and outside specialists to come see what we're doing and to get feedback. Uh, opening ourselves up uh, because we want to improve, because we want to get better, because the children and the family that were and the and the adults that were providing these services for deserve it. What will it take to open up a Camp Hask Ertis Uh The Donnie. Well, ask me, ask you to, no, no, that's, that's not coming. That's, that's, that's coming from friend. me. <laughs> uh, brother, uh, amen. I'll just say amen. Amen. I'll, say, I'll take that what you just said as a tefillah. The answer is let, let's do it. Let's do it. All the entrepreneurs out there, all the guys who, with big ideas and big out there. I assume it could be replicated let's do in it. there. It could be, we could do it and we could do it better. And we could do it all over the world where there's a need. So we, we have to fill that need. That's our job in the world. Hashem put us here to fix. Hashem put us here to help and to do for others. And if there's a need here and there is a need. There is a need. I can tell here. you firsthand there's a need. Let's, so, so let's do it. Let's do it. We need a few good people to get together. We need some bucks. Uh, right. We need some money. We need, we need a space. But more importantly, we need tefillahs and we need ratzon. We need people who are willing to take risks for Kvod Shemaim. And we need some people out there who are ready to get involved and do something because there are so many families here in Eretz Israel uh, who can who you would know benefit what? from I'm going to put together, just based on this conversation, I'm going to put together a, what's called a, uh, I guess a speculative group. We'll try to get a bunch of people together just as a first step, just to put the idea together and start brainstorming and seeing what it would take to do something like that. But you know, maybe we'll start, you could start with a, a two-week program and grow it to four weeks. But, you know, the, the need is definitely there. And uh, the I think the will is definitely there. Yeah. Obviously, any type of undertaking such as as this is huge. But you know, let's let's put together, let's start brainstorming. It. Quote Shemaim. If we do it for Quote Shemaim, we do something with Shem Shemaim. Any it. business, any nonprofit, for profit, not for profit, anything that we do in our personal lives and our professional lives, if we do it Lashem Shemaim, so there's a divine promise that it has kiyum. If we're going to do L'Shem Shemaim, so then we'll, we'll find the investors. We'll find the venture capital. So you guys here to hear first, there's going to be Camp Hask, Eretz Yisrael, Bezrat Hashem. Daven for it. If you want to be part of it, reach out. Even better, there's not going to be a need, Mertz Hashem. Mertz Hashem. God Amen. willing, there's not going to be a need. Hashem is going to level the playing field for us. Beautiful. All right, Judah, this has been absolutely fantastic. Really such incredible background, such in incredibly inspirational. So much to learn from this. And it's been more inspiring. But the business aspects of running such a, an undertaking is uh, incredible for any entrepreneur. The passion that everybody on your team shows and puts in is, is you know, is necessary for any type of endeavor, you know, uh, profit or nonprofit. So this has been an incredible podcast. I thank you so much for joining us. I wish you a tremendous amount of hatzlacha and for you, the entire staff and really call Kavod. It's, you know, you, I'm jealous. I'm jealous of the chelak that you guys have. 
uh, in Om Haba for taking care of these kids and for helping the families and all that you do. So just uh, any last thoughts before we uh, just close it off? I could say I'm not a businessman. I'm not a businessman. I don't have the experience. I'm certainly not one to give any type of advice to those who are listening out there who are really uh, who are really doing it. You know, as, as, as the bracha's hediot, as a, a bracha of just a, of a Jew who lives in Eretz Israel, I could just, I'd like to bless everyone who's out there giving it a shot and trying to make it happen in whatever area uh, that it's happening should, should, should see great success and should be blessed with as good and supportive uh, a team as I have the privilege of working with. And the light of the tzaddikim should be with all of us. Those are really the, the, the captain of our, the captains of our team, the tzaddikim and the generation. And we should all be blessed to keep the main thing the main thing and be marba kvot shemaim together. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the From Entrepreneur Podcast with Nahum Kligman. We hope you learned something valuable and will share this with your friends. For show notes, archives, and pre-